What's up guys? We are starting off 2019 with, as you might have already guessed, another Mythic Legions figure because I'm still churning through Advent of Decay figures. And today we're taking a look at Lord Adon. This is one of the high elf type characters in the line, so I'm really interested to see what this guy has going on. You can see him there in that standard Mythic Legions resealable packaging. He is in the big window there. We do have a bio for this guy on the side, and then the back has that same artwork we see throughout the line. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. All right, guys, here he is out of the package. Our Lord Adon figure. Uh, this is one that uses a lot of parts from different figures that we've seen throughout Advent of Decay so far. I'm honestly not sure if much on this guy is unique, except for maybe that, that headdress that he has on. But we're going to take a look at all the normal stuff here first. We're going to kick things off, as usual, with articulation, see how this guy moves around. Now, as you might have expected, he is going to be pretty standard as far as Mythic Legion's 2.0 style bodies go. So you've got a head that can rotate. He looks up a little bit. The hair's going to get in the way. Just That's just the way it is. And he looks down. Arms go out. Swivel around. We've got a swivel elbow with a hinge. We've got swiveling at the gauntlet. Swiveling at the wrist. Hinges. You've got that mid-torso cut so he can go left and right. Back and forth a little bit. Not too much, though. And then you've got a waist twist, and he can also bobble a little bit down there as well. Legs go out. Kick forward, kick back. Thigh cut. You've got a single-jointed rotating knee. We've got rotation, and we've got rocker and hinge down at those ankles. So it's it's standard Mythic Legion stuff for the newer style figures. So you're getting, you know, exactly what you'd expect to get if you've seen any figures that look like this before. Malachi Cinderhorn, Grisha the Slitherer, figures like that. Now, in terms of the overall look and feel, the design for this guy, he very much gives off kind of a regal, high elf type of look. He's got the browns, the coppers, the green color scheme going on, and I think it works really, really well. This guy, of course, like I've already mentioned, uses a lot of parts that we've seen already in this line. So parts from figures like Grisha the Slitherer or... Malachi Cinderhorn, stuff like that, which is pretty normal. A lot of the elves really share the same type of look, which, you know, that kind of works. But I really do like his color scheme. I really, really like the leather aspect that they've got going on with the paint on his chest here. The gold accents all over really work to make him seem a little bit more... I don't know, maybe a little bit more important than some other elves. There is a lot of nice dry brushing on the copper plates on his thighs down here with that kind of royal blue color that runs through his armor. It also runs through up on his shoulders, which carry that same color scheme. It kind of blends the upper and lower halves of the bodies together. And then we've got the, you know, kind of plate shin guards and boots down here that match the gauntlets and the gloves. Again, more of that royal blue, but this time it's mixed in with a nice kind of foresty green color. So I really, really like that. He does have the uh, rubbery sash piece that sits on his belt. So he's got one of the more audacious kind of belt buckles here. And then on the backside, you can see a lot of exposed chain mail. You can see we've got more buckles here, more of the plate that runs through the back, more chain mail, more of that blue color. So there's a lot of cool little touches on this figure that kind of make him seem a little bit more ostentatious than some of the others, maybe. One thing I was really surprised to see that was missing on this figure, or at least maybe not missing, but I would have liked to have had one, actually. I feel like this guy needs a cape, and he just doesn't have one. I feel like for being, you know, a slightly more elevated position in terms of the elven society and mythic legions, this guy should have had one. I'm really surprised to see that he doesn't. I'll wait and find out if I'm actually missing it or not, but he definitely didn't come with one. I feel like he could definitely have uh, have benefited from one, though. But in general, I do like his, his look. I like the color scheme they've used, and really that's what it comes down to with this figure, because we've seen so much of this, this body work before. For this guy, it's all about the colors, and I think they chose a really, really nice palette for him. Now, up top for the head sculpt, I think we've got kind of a basic one, but at the same time, it works really, really well. His bio makes him seem kind of like an icy, cold, calculating individual, and I think his facial expression gives off that vibe. We've got those pupilless black eyes, which, if you've heard me talk before, you know I really dig that kind of stuff. I like pupilless eyes. It gives an idea that they're more than human in terms of what they are. We have got some scars on the right side of his face, uh, your left on the screen, and we've got the pointy elven ears. We have got the gold headdress, which is kind of basic, but it's got that antler ornamentation, which is very similar to the other antlers we've seen in the line. So a light brown for the base, and then some dark brown to bring out the sculpt. And I think they work really well just to give him a little bit of a, a heft and make him seem a little bit more important. We've got a big flowing head of hair that we've already talked about. It does impede articulation just a little bit, but it looks really good. Really good. Nice sculpt on it. A lot of black wash to bring that sculpt out. And then, of course, you've got a little bit of gold back there for the uh, kind of ornamentation that holds his braids together, which run around from the front to the backside. So all in all, it's kind of on the basic side, but at the same time, it works really well for this guy. 
Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is pretty stacked, all things considered. He's got a good array of weapons. He's also got some pauldrons. Uh, these are just sort of the smaller, more kind of uh, normal knight's plate pauldrons, but they're done up with his same green color that have kind of a wash over them, so they very much fit his look. They fit his slim build as well, so I really do like those. Uh, we do have two straps for this guy. You've got two because we have multiple things that could hang off of him. So we've got a quiver of arrows. So we've got one uh, with the gold gold trim on a green quiver with blue arrow tips to uh, tie into his armor. And you do have a single arrow to go along with that. We do have a long bow here. So it's just done up in gold plastic. It's got a uh, it's got a string on it, so it's pretty well tensed, and you can stick an arrow in the little nubs on the side of it to to actually lock it in place. We have got one of the standard short swords with a silver and gold scheme, and then we've got one of the long swords with a silver and gold scheme, and then we've got this big boy here, and we've seen this before. Uh, we saw this in the weapons packs in the elf and the in the uh, the vampire packs, but that was the first time I'd come across this. I think he's he's got a really really nice color scheme on this one. I'm very, very happy with this shield. It looks obviously very elven. It works really well, and it all ties into his color scheme with the golds, with the greens, and then that blue. So he has a lot of stuff here, all things considered. And that maybe that's why he didn't get a cape, uh, which in that way, I think I'll take all of the accessories in lieu of a cape. So overall, this is a pretty solid figure. I think he works really, really well in line with the other good elves in the line. Uh, he obviously didn't make my top 10 2018 favorite Mythic Legions, but that doesn't make him any less impressive. He's got a great sculpt, which we know from other figures. He has a fantastic color scheme. Paint job is on point. He comes with a ton of accessories, and in general, he just looks pretty cool. There's really nothing, nothing to complain about with this figure, outside of the fact that I do think he does need a cape, but at the same time, if we didn't get one because he has so many accessories, I think I'll take a pass on that one. But otherwise, this is a fun figure. If you're into elves, this is a really good one to go for, and he just fits in with all the other slimmer build characters in this line really, really nicely. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay Lord Adon figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.